When you put your soul and your passion in it, it's uh, it's sad when someone just grab it and take it away. The social media post that got it back. And Team 10 investigates a two-block ambulance ride cost a local vet $2,000 and exposes a bigger problem. Why the VA isn't paying medical bills for veterans in California. But we begin with that story you will only see on 10 News. Kind of scary in a way because you don't know why they would take such an odd item. When we came out. In the dark of the night, a strange theft is creeping out a lot of people in a neighborhood in the North County. And as 10 News reporter Michael Chen found out, car owners now fear the item that was stolen will lead to a repeat visit from the thief. It is found inside your glove compartment. You never really even look at it. Generally no personal information in it. So why are thieves now targeting it on Red Coach Lane in Encinitas. I haven't seen any crime in the 10 years I've been here. Crime is unusual, and this one is downright strange. Uh, this is my wife's car. On Saturday morning, Mark Allen found his wife's locked Toyota Prius open and ransacked. Over there was a new Garmin, and it wasn't taken. The thief instead grabbing a hidden $20 bill and something odd. It was very bizarre that the manual would be missing. Yes, the car manual, and it wasn't the only one nabbed a few feet away. Main manual, the big manual, was gone. The manual for Allen's Acura TLX also missing. The thief also tossing his car, leaving behind electronics like an iPod. Because he took something so seemingly uninteresting. And a few blocks away, two other vehicles broken into the same night. Car manuals vanished. What are they going to use it for? Our calls to local agencies for the answer unanswered due to the holiday. But in Florida, police there recently warning of a trend of car manual thefts. Sometimes valet keys found in those manuals. Thieves also looking for key codes in hopes of going to a dealer and asking for a replacement key. It's very disturbing. It's very disturbing. Allen says the thefts have stolen his peace of mind. I didn't sleep very well the next, that next day, wondering what's next. Are they going to come back? Are they coming back for the cars? Michael Chen, 10 News. Wow. All right, so we scoured dealer sites and found several that also require proof of ownership as well as other verification to get those new keys. We also pulled up this crime map. It shows Encinitas Boulevard. We're talking about between El Camino Real and Rancho Santa Fe Road. There have been about a dozen car break-ins and burglaries in this area just in the past month. It's a lot happening now. San Diegans getting their first chance to share their concerns about the president with the men who represent Present them. Congressman Scott Peters is holding the first of what may be several town hall meetings, and our tenders reporter is live in Claremont. Yeah, hi, Steve. The congressman is actually asking people to fill out one of these surveys to let him know what they are most concerned about. Now, right now, they're actually taking a break for the evening prayer service here at the Islamic Center of San Diego, and then the town hall will continue. Ever since President Trump took office, grassroots groups have formed asking their representatives to hold town hall meetings. This is the first since Congress is now on break. Representative Scott Peters is taking questions from a crowd of at least 200. He he called President Trump's travel ban a Muslim ban. He also said the president's plan to extend the border wall will be counterproductive to the economy and won't improve our safety. It's not a Republican, uh, traditionally Republican thing to waste $15 billion in a wall that gives a diplomatic middle finger to our, one of our closest allies. Republicans are not comfortable with that. Several groups have protested outside the offices of Republican Congressman Darrell Issa and Duncan Hunter. They want them to hold similar town halls. Neither congressman has set a date. Peter's next town hall will be this Wednesday night with Representative Susan Davis. Reporting live in Claremont, Rachel Bianco, 10 News. All right, Rachel, thank you. And we're still working to find out if this explosion at an oil refinery near Los Angeles will mean even higher gas prices here. That's what happened when there was an explosion at the same plant in Torrance two years ago. The recent blast happened Saturday morning, sending flames shooting 40 feet into the air. No one was evacuated or hurt. Investigators still trying to figure out what caused it. 10 News exclusive now. A local artist has this stolen, one-of-a-kind LeBron James painting returned thanks to social media. And now he's talking about the shocking heist. Paco Pablos was on stage at a music and art festival in Courtyard when the thief took off with the painting. Pablo says it's a special piece of art that took him about a week to finish and it's part of a larger series. 
when you put your soul and your passion in it, it's uh, it's sad when someone just grab and take it away. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it because, I mean, if it was up to me, I would never take a picture and brag about something I did, especially if it's a felony. Now, this is the social media post and the picture that Pablo's mentioned bragging about the theft. Someone reported it, leading police to this thief. I mean, we have calls and emails into San Diego police and the courts to find out who was arrested, their charges, and when they'll be in court. All right, we've got a crime alert. The armed men who forced restaurant workers to hide in fear are still in the loose. Those men were wearing masks when they walked into Loretto's Mexican restaurant on Bancroft Street on Sunday morning. The workers saw them coming. They went and they hid in the back of the restaurant and locked the back door and then called police. Deputies say the would-be robbers left empty-handed. All right, we've got new information around 200 thousand Sandag transportation surveys have started going out across the county. No matter if you use a car, a bus, train, trolley, Sandag wants to know how you get around. Ariel Wessler got one of those surveys in the mail and he is live in our newsroom with much more on this. Well, Steve, that's right. This is it. You're going to want to look for this survey or this letter, I should say, in your mailbox. It has a code for you to take an online survey. I sat down in our newsroom today to take that survey and the questions cover everything from how you get around to where you go and how much it costs you. Sandag leaders say all of that information is going to help them prioritize future projects for our county. I also went to the Old Town Transit Center to ask San Diegans what improvements they'd like to see. Well, I do like that idea of having um, the the trolley go out to La Jolla. That that would be awesome. But it'd be better if if there'd be more buses to come that way. It'd be easier to get to places faster. There is a second part to this questionnaire as well. Sandag also asks you to download the smartphone app R Move and automatically tracks your travel patterns, kind of creating a travel diary, and then asks you some more questions about how and why you traveled where you did. It's going to track you for about a week. Sandag says the data is not analyzed individually. It protects your privacy because it's grouped with other households. And a similar study for the San Diego area was last done in 2006. Now, the work does pay off, and I saw this in an email for every adult in your house who completes the travel diary, Sandag will give you a gift card to Walmart or Amazon worth up to $20. Live in the newsroom, Ariel Wessler, 10 News. All right, Ariel, thank you. Well, you don't need Sandag to tell you the traffic in San Diego can get pretty bad, but just how bad might surprise you. A new study ranks San Diego in the top 50 for the worst traffic in the world. We come in at number 47. San Diego spent 10% of their time driving in traffic last year. For those of you that drive during the rush hour, well, you spent just over 46 hours sitting in traffic. We're still not as bad as LA, though. They were ranked as the worst city in the world for traffic. All right, Tika Brian Schlonsky here in the 10 News Live Center tracking some breaking news. And this just in, we are learning some new information now about the parolee who is suspected of shooting and killing this Whittier police officer. Police said the suspect is a 26-year-old gang member who was just released from jail about a week ago. Investigators say before he got into this gun battle with police, he killed another man in East Los Angeles, stole a car, and then wrecked it into another car. You can see we have a photo of that right here. Police say the suspect pulled a gun when they got ready to search him, shooting and killing 25-year-old veteran officer Keith Boyer, then shooting and wounding his partner as well, Patrick Hazel. Guys. All right, as Brian was just talking about, it was a moving scene today. Dozens of officers saluting as Officer Keith Boyer's body arrived at the Orange County Coroner's Office in that white car. His colleagues breaking down in tears as they remembered him. You know, it's really hard for me to hold back. My tears, because all of us have been grieving since 10 o'clock this morning, and I didn't think I had any tears left. Boyer's partner is in stable condition. New developments, more than 100 Oroville evacuees are being told they don't have to worry about catching the norovirus. There was concern of an outbreak at a Red Cross shelter in Chico, but a spokesperson now saying the people who got sick simply had a stomach illness.